So Connor Bedard is having a very good rookie season. I believe he's up to 50 points in 51 games after that five point performance he had last night. So in honor of that and in honor of the Chicago Blackhawks not being very good and what I mean by not very good, I mean they're straight trash. The worst team in the entire NHL. I have no idea how he's almost point per game at 18 years old with the trash cans. I shouldn't say trash cans, but I mean, come on now. Chicago's roster, the worst in the entire league. And I said that going into the season, and that's what exactly what they are. So what we're going to be doing is since Connor Bedard does not have any good teammates every single season that he does not win the Stanley Cup, we are going to be adding one star to the Chicago Blackhawks roster using the wheel. So we are going to spin it at the end of every single season, whatever team we land on. I'm going to choose a player from there. And what I mean by star is anybody who's a 90 plus overall. So if a team doesn't have a 90 plus on the roster, I'm just going to choose their highest overall player on their team. So without further ado, let's take a look at this god awful Chicago Blackhawks roster. I do believe they have the lowest overall rating in the entire game here. They are rated at an 82 overall. And I don't think any team is even close to them. Even a team like San Jose. I mean, San Jose is an 82 as well. But Chicago was statistically eliminated from the playoffs sooner than San Jose. So here is the roster of the Chicago Blackhawks. Also, I did bump up Connor Bedard to a 90 overall. And he's going to grow throughout this video as he ages into his prime. On the first line, we do have Taylor Hall and Taylor Radish. But in real life, Hall has been injured for most of the season. And he's not going to come back this year. He's an 85. Outside of him, nobody else really is that great of a player. I mean, Kershaw. Chev's having a pretty good season. Dickinson surprisingly has been pretty good as well. Everybody else, meh. I mean, Nick Foligno is a great leader, but defensively, we have Seth Jones, who obviously everybody knows how overrated he is. Kevin Korczynski will be a great defender, but is currently only 19 years old. And in goal, we have Peter Mrazek at an 83 overall. So this roster obviously is pretty trash. Hopefully we can improve it and by like year five or six, we can compete for a Stanley Cup. Now, before we go ahead and simulate, if you guys do enjoy videos like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also turn on notifications so you don't miss a single live stream or video that I put out. So absolutely no surprise here as Chicago is going to end up finishing seventh in the central going 34, 38 and 10. Good enough for 78 points. Now at the top of the NHL, we have the Edmonton Oilers who are going to go on and win the Stanley Cup this season. They went 52, 22 and eight and now at the bottom we have calgary san jose arizona and chicago but not for long as we are going to be adding players to this roster connor bedard is going to go ahead and have a great rookie season 56 goals and 94 points in 82 games taylor hall had 79 kershev only 55 dickinson 52 and seth jones 48 and of course peter mrazic 28 28 and 6 one shutout not very good overall so i'm not really surprised by anything not disappointed as well as this is only season number one leon dry is going to go ahead and lead the entire NHL. NHL in scoring with 123 points, followed by McKinnon's 121. McDavid had 118. Kyle Connor was up there. Nylander had a good season, as well as Austin Matthews. Now for the goal side, Bedard, Matthews, and McKinnon are all going to have a three-way tie for the lead with 56 goals. Bedard is, of course, an 18-year-old rookie, while Matthews and McKinnon are in their prime. Leon Dreisaitl had 54 goals. Cole Caulfield is up there. Ovi Robertson. And just like I predicted, the Edmonton Oilers would go on and win the Stanley Cup, but surprisingly, they beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in five games in the finals. I mean, in real life, Pittsburgh is in straight shambles right now. Leon Dreisettle is going to take on the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. McKinnon's going to win the Maurice Richard, the Norris to Kale McCarr, the Con Smythe will go to Connor McDavid, and the Calder to Connor Bedard. Stuart Skinner is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will somehow go to Austin Matthews. All right, so here we are on the wheel. We are going to spin it. Whatever team we land on, a 90 plus overall player I'm allowed to choose from. I can choose whatever one I want, honestly. And we are going to be starting off with the Ottawa Senators. I don't know if they have a 90 overall on their team. Brady Kachuk might be or Tim Stutzla. So the Ottawa Senators do not have a 90 plus overall. So instead, I'm going to be adding Tim Stutzla, who's an 89 overall to the Chicago Blackhawks, who is now our second best player on our team. Timmy Stu is going to slot in nicely as our second line center at an 89 overall. Honestly, right off rip, Ottawa was not the greatest team to get first. There's a bunch of other teams with higher overall players on the roster and in real life Ottawa has been one of if not the most disappointing teams in the entire league this season you know somehow the Chicago Blackhawks are going to improve drastically as we actually made the playoffs finishing second in our division going 46 30 and 6 enough for 98 points only Colorado was better in our division we were not top 10 in the entire league though Vancouver was the best team winning 51 games but I'm just surprised we made the playoffs I mean is Tim Stutzla all Chicago needs Connor Bedard is going to have his first ever 100 
100 point season. He also scored 60 goals, 103 points. Taylor Hall had 96 and 23 goals. Tim Stutzla only, I mean, he did have 39 goals, only 89 points. Taylor Radish had 60. Donato, 57. Let's see what our goalie did here. Mrazek, 36, 24, and 4. Three shutouts and not really great stats either. I have no idea how we made the playoffs, to be real with you. Now, for the entire NHL, Nylander is going to lead in scoring with 115 points, followed by Johnny Hockey's 114. Matthews had 111. Jack Hughes, 105. Nathan McKinnon, 104. Kane, Marner, Bedard, and McDavid were all up there. Now, for the goal side, Austin Matthews is going to score 71 on the season, winning that Maurice Richard. Meanwhile, Bedsy, he had 60, a very good season by a 19 year old, even though it does say he's 18. Patrick Line had 56. Ranton in 52. Kaprizov had 51. Robertson, 51. A lot of 50 goal scorers in the NHL this season. And in the first round of the playoffs, we are up against our bitter rivals in the St. Louis Blues. And unfortunately, St. Louis would beat us in six games in the very first round as the Winnipeg Jets go on and win the Stanley Cup, beating Toronto also in six games, but in the Stanley Cup finals. I mean, we did not really have much of a playoff run, but Bedard is going to have three goals and seven points in six games in the first round. A minus three, but for his first ever playoff run, that's pretty good, honestly. Nylander is going to take him the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Matthew's going to win the Maurice Richard, the Norris, the Kale McCarr, the Conn Smythe to Kyle Connor. Thatcher Demko is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie again is going to go to Matthews. Alrighty, here we are on the wheel yet again, spinning it, see which team we land on. Hopefully we get a better team than Ottawa, and we are going to be landing on, ah, I mean, we get Kirill Kaprizov from the Minnesota Wild. That's not bad, I guess. So, welcome in Kirill Kaprizov to the Chicago Blackhawks, 92 overall, and that's the perfect winger to put alongside Connor Bedard. Our first line now is shaping up very well with Taylor Hall, Bedard, and Kaprizov. Timmy Stu is still our second line center, and hopefully we can continue to keep on building. Well, the Blackhawks fell all the way back down to earth as we missed the playoffs, finishing sixth in the Central, going 40, 38, and 4, 84 points, so pretty good season. Maybe last year was an outlier, and that's not going to happen until we add a few more pieces to the roster. The Red Wings were the best team in the entire NHL, winning 51 games, followed by Toronto, Vancouver, Boston, and Dallas. Kirill Kaprizov's going to end up leading our team in scoring with 105 points, also 41 goals. Bedard had 99 points and 57 goals, followed by Timmy Stews, 91. Taylor Hall had 88. Donato, 57. I mean, everybody on our team was pretty much a minus outside of Bedard, who was a plus three. And yeah, Peter Mrazek was not very good whatsoever. Whatsoever. I cannot wait to add a goalie to this team as we desperately need one. So hopefully we can land on a team that has a 90 plus overall goaltender. Not a lot do in the NHL right now. Patty Kane's going to go ahead and lead everybody in scoring with 119 points, followed by Matthews 112. McKinnon was up there. Kaprizov had a very good season as well as Kucherov and Mitch Marner. Now for the goal side, Matthews will lead with 58 on the season, followed by Bedard's 57. Big drop off to McKinnon's 47. Also passed and Ranton at 47. Kucherov was up there. Debrinket had a good year. Anthony Duclair scored 44 goals, which no doubt is a career high for him. He scored 31 a few years ago in Florida. Obviously, he got traded to San Jose, and that's not a great spot to end up in. And the Boston Bruins are going to get it done as they defeat the Colorado Avalanche in six games in the Stanley Cup Finals. Patrick Kane is going to take them the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Matthew's going to win that Maurice Richard, the Norris, the Rasmus Dahlin, the Con Smythe to Charlie McAvoy. Philip Gustafson is actually going to win the Vesna somehow, and the Selkie will go to Connor. McDavid, the best hockey player in the entire world. Now, I'm hoping to land on a team that does have a really good goaltender. Give me like Tampa Bay or Colorado, please. No, not the Anaheim Ducks. I don't even think they have a single 90 overall player on the roster. So I've added another winger to Chicago as Troy Terry is the newest member. 87 overall, going to be on the first line alongside Connor Bedard and Kaprizov. Bedard now is up to a 94 overall as he's just going to continue to get better and better year after year. Timmy Stu is still on that second line. Holding down the fort alongside Taylor Hall now as he got bumped down because of Troy Terry adding to the roster. Now Chicago is going to have a bounce back season finishing second in the Central going 48, 24, and 10. 106 points as we were the second best in our division and top three in the entire NHL. So by far the best season we have had so far in this video as only the Winnipeg Jets and Vancouver Canucks were better than us. Connor Bedard also is going to have his best season of the video. 60 goals, 115 points, followed by Kaprizov's 108 and 44 goals. Tim Stutzla had 85 and 21 goals. Troy Terry was up there, had a pretty good season, 25 goals. Taylor Hall had 63. Kershev, 58. Now for Peter Mrazek, again, averaging three goals against per game pretty much every single season. Dreisaitl is, again, going to lead everybody in scoring, this time with 121 points, followed by McDavid. 
Simmons 117, Bedard 115, JT Miller somehow had 115 points, Kyle Connor was up there, Patterson, Nathan McKinnon now for the goal side, who is going to lead? It's going to be Kyle Connor who scored 66 goals, followed by Bedard who had 60, Rantanen had 56, Matthews 56, and Brock Besser had 50. And unfortunately for us, we have a very tough matchup in round number one in the Colorado Avalanche, who we all know simulate very well, and they have a very good team, so it's going to be a tough series. I'm not expecting to win it, honestly. So we actually somehow managed to beat Colorado in game seven of round number one, but the Winnipeg Jets would spoil our playoff run in game seven of round number two, as they would go all the way, beating the Islanders in six games in the finals. As for the playoffs, Connor Bedard was okay. I mean, he had nine goals, only one assist for 10 points in 14 games. He was also a minus nine, so not really the greatest playoff run. Again, Drysaddle going to win the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Kyle Connor, the Maurice Richard, the Norris is going to go to Adam Fox. The Con Smythe also to Kyle Connor as the Vesna will go to Bennington and the Selkie again back to Austin Matthews. Please, can I please get a very good team here? I got Anaheim, Ottawa, and what was the other team? I don't even remember, honestly. And you're going to give me the Montreal Canadiens. Are you kidding me? Another team does that does not have a 90-plus overall player on the roster. Well, it's going to be a slow build to a Stanley Cup championship team here in Chicago. So the next player that I'm going to be adding to Chicago is going to be none other than Nick Suzuki, our second-line center at an 88 overall. Now Tim Stutzla can move to the wing. And honestly, Montreal didn't have many good choices to choose from. Our top six is rounding out, though. It's pretty good, but everything else on our roster has not been touched whatsoever. So yet again for a second season in a row Chicago is going to make the playoffs we went 42 30 and 10 good enough for 94 points not even close to the top of the NHL though I mean we were top 10 top 10 is not bad whatsoever for this roster offensively we did not have a great season as Kaprizov is going to lead us in scoring with 92 points followed by Bedard's only 82 and 47 goals Suzuki had 74 but he was a minus 8 Tim Stutzla did have 31 goals but 67 points Kershev was okay Troy Terry was all right I guess I'm not even going to check Peter Mrazek. He was not very good, I'm guessing at least. Dry Subtle and McDavid are going to tie for the Art Ross with 108 points, followed by Breadman's 102. Patrick Kane had 100. Kyle Connor was up there, passed at a very good season himself. Now for the goals, Ovi and Rantanen are going to tie at 52, followed by Matthews, who had 50. Line A had 48, Bedard 47, and Dry Subtle 46. And in the first round of the playoffs, we are up against the boring LA Kings, who are just going to trap the entire series and not want to forecheck. So we actually actually had a hell of a playoff run, but we lost in the conference finals in game seven to the Colorado Avalanche as they went on and won the Stanley Cup, beating Washington in five games. Connor Bedard had a very good playoff run, 12 goals and 21 points in only 18 games. Kaprizov also at 21 points. Tim Stutzla had 16. Troy Terry, 15. Dreisaitl again is going to win the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. The Maurice Richard will go to Miko Rantanen, the Norris, Air Carlson, the Con Smythe to the dog, Nathan McKinnon, who actually might end up winning his very first Hart Trophy this season in real life. As the Vesna will go to Vanacek and the Selkie will go to Matthews yet again. All right, we're definitely going to need a good team here to speed things up as we've been getting straight shit teams off rip here. And oh my God, we're going to get the Philadelphia Flyers. Are you kidding me? This wheel is literally cursed. So the next player that I've added to the Chicago Blackhawks is going to be none other than Travis Konechny at an 87 overall, as I could have gone with him or the name that shall not be named, who is a goaltender who no longer plays currently for the Philadelphia Flyers because of a lot of controversy. So I did go with Konechny. Now our top six is good. We're only up one overall as we're 83 as a team now, which is not really promising as we are, what, six years in now, I believe at this point. If I don't get a good team after this season, I'm literally gonna snap. We've got straight trash teams on the wheel every single time I've spun it. I mean, come on. Give me at least one good team here, man. And for some reason or somehow, the Chicago Blackhawks are actually gonna miss the playoffs this season as we were fourth in the Central going 40, 35, and 7, 87 points on the season, and just another missed opportunity. Hopefully, we do get to add a better player that we've been adding so far. Just give me a good team on the wheel, please. The wheel is screwing with me hard right now. Kirill Kaprizov is going to lead our team in scoring with 116 points. He also had 43 goals. Bedard had 105 and 52 goals. Tim Stutzla had 73. Troy Terry was up there with 68. Nick Suzuki only had 60. The entire NHL, Kaprizov will lead in scoring with 116, followed by Matthews, but 
Bedard. Sam Reinhart was up there at 103. Patrick Kane had a good season, and Kyle Connor as well. Now on the goal side, Matthews will lead with 56, followed by Bedard with 52. Robertson at 51. Tate Thompson, 46, and Kyle Connor, who's been dominating in this simulation at 46 goals. And the Vancouver Canucks are going to end up sweeping the New York Rangers in the Stanley Cup Finals to win their very first in their franchise's history. Kaprizov is going to win the Ted Lindsay Art Ross and Hart Trophy. Matthews is going to take home that Maurice Richard, the Norris to Eric Carlson, the Conn Smythe to Elias Pedersen. Freddie Anderson is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will also go to Matthews. We need to get a good team here on the wheel. This is, got, this is make or break right now, boys. Please give me good team. Please. No, not the Calgary Flames. Why am I getting cursed right now? Holy hell, I'm never using this wheel ever again for a single video on my channel. So, for the very first time in the video, I finally added a defenseman to Chicago, Rasmus Anderson, the highest overall on the Calgary Flames at an 87. As the wheel continues to absolutely screw me, give me the worst teams possible to choose from. But here's our roster. Hopefully, we can make the playoffs. Let's move on. Chicago is going to have a very good regular season going 50, 28, and 4. 104 points, the best of the video, I believe so, as we were first in our division, and we were second in the entire NHL, only behind the Toronto Maple Leafs. Connor Bedard is going to absolutely explode this season. Pause. Having 68 goals and 143 points, followed by Kaprizov's 94. Suzuki only had 67 Travis Konechny was all right, I guess. Tim Stutzla had 62. Taylor Hall wasn't very good. I mean, Konechny did score 31 goals and Kaprizov had 36, but Bedard basically carried us to this record. So, obviously, Bedsy is going to lead the entire NHL in goals with 68 and points with 143. Matthews was up there. William Nylander had a good season. McKinnon and McDavid are always going to be good. Now, on the goal side, Matthews is going to come in second place with 63, followed by Kyle Connors, 54, and Kucherov's 52. And in the first round of the playoffs, we up against the Nashville Predators. I don't know how we have made it here, but we are in the Stanley Cup Finals with this roster, with the Chicago Blackhawks up against the New York Rangers. I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we made it with this roster, but we are here with the Chicago Blackhawks up against the New York Islanders in the Stanley Cup Finals, who don't have the best team, honestly. Maybe we can win it. Maybe we can. Who knows? But let's see if we can go on and finally win Connor Bedard, a Stanley Cup here in NHL 24. And we have done it against all odds including the wheel screwing us pretty much every single season it has only taken us seven long years to get here as the chicago blackhawks are stanley cup champions yet again we added a lot of mid players there's a few exceptions to that like tim stutza and kirill kaprizov who were very high overalls but the rest of the players weren't even 90 plus overall so they were not even superstars that we added to the roster and we still got it done in under seven seasons as bedard pretty much carried us this year he's gonna take on the cons 14 goals and 36 points a hell of a postseason for him i also forgot to give him the captaincy so that's an l on my part but we are still going to be able to see him raise it here in new york as we are in ubs arena i believe there it is the stanley cup about to be raised for the chicago blackhawks as we are stanley cup champions for the first time since 2015 i believe was their last cup victory as seth jones is actually going to come lifted he's going to come collected for the first time in his career as the chicago blackhawks our Stanley Cup champions obviously is going to pass it off to Mr. Connor Bedard. Who else would it go to other than Bedsy? Five-point night last night. A beauty of a passing play as well. He's a very underrated passer. A lot of people don't look at him as that because he's more of a shooter. But Connor Bedard definitely can pass the puck. And he can raise the Stanley Cup as he's about to do so here in UBS Arena. As seven years into his NHL career, he is a Stanley Cup champion with the Blackhawks. Hats off to Bedsy for working so damn hard on his toe drag release as of course he's going to pass it off to Nick Felino, who's basically his dad on the team other than Corey Perry when he was there but yeah I mean I did not expect to win the Stanley Cup with this roster I guess Rasmus Anderson was our solution all along as soon as I added him we just straight up won everything but I mean overall I am happy that we got it done in a reasonable time frame as the Chicago Blackhawks are Stanley Cup champions here in NHL 24 so obviously we know Bedard had a very good postseason Kirill Kaprizov 
Kucherov was good. He had more goals than Bedsy at 15 compared to 29 points to 36. Troy Terry had 26 points and 10 goals. Suzuki had 20. Konechny, 19. Connor Bedard is, of course, going to take home every single individual award. The Norris will actually go somehow to Morgan Riley. The Con Smythe to Bedsy. Ilya Sorokin is going to take home the Vesna, And the Selkie will go to Austin Matthews yet again. So that is going to do it for this video, boys. We have gone ahead and won Connor Bedard a Stanley Cup in under seven seasons, even though the wheel pretty much screwed me every single time I spun it. We got it done. He won a Stanley Cup with Chicago. We got it done. He won a Stanley Cup finally. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, don't be silly. Wrap your willy.